Oh, right, so we are going to do the breadth in chemistry um, practice paper today. So let's have a look at the first section. This is, of course, the multiple choice section. So, first of all, we have got to uh, look at a couple of isotopes. So we should be able to whiz through this one quite quickly. Um, two isotopes here give you the mass number and also percentage of abundance. So we've got to go through this, which is correct. The relative atomic mass of the element is 47. Well, it can't be 47, can it? Because uh, the mass numbers are 144, 145. All the other isotopes are going to be around that number, so there's no way it can be that. Uh, isotope B has more protons than isotope A. That can't be right, because isotopes have the same number of protons. Isotope B has fewer neutrons than isotope A. No, it's the opposite. The mass number of B is higher, so B's got more neutrons. So the relative isotopic mass of isotope B is 145. That is correct because it's the same as the mass number for relative isotopic um, mass. So the answer to 1D is B. Oh, is D rather. <laughs> um, question 2. What is the oxidation number of vanadium in B2O7 for minus? Well, we know that oxygen is minus 2. And I've got seven of them, so that comes to minus 14. The overall charge on the iron is minus 4. And I've got two vanadiums. So whatever vanadium is, minus 14 gives me minus 4. So hopefully you can see that vanadium has got to be plus 5 to get that to work. So the answer to 2 is A. OK, so moving on to the next part. What is the electron configuration of an Mg2 plus iron? So remember, if it's Mg2+, plus, it has lost two electrons. So the atomic number of magnesium is 12. So it has got 10 electrons that I'm looking for. Um, so the answer is going to be B, because uh, you've got your 10 electrons there. It's lost those outer electrons in the 3s subshell. So answer is B. Uh, question four, what is the shape and bond angle of a molecule? It's got two bonding pairs and two lone pairs. Well, this one should be familiar to you. You know this molecule. Um, it is, of course, water. Um, and if you've got two bonding pairs, two lone pairs, it is, of course, nonlinear. So the answer to question four is, again, B. OK, uh, now question five, which molecule is polar? Um, so you need an electronegative uh, element in there, so two elements with different electronegativities, and it's got to be asymmetrical. So uh, the answer is going to be C for this one, um, because uh, carbon tetrachloride is, of course, symmetrical, so uh, overall the molecule is uh, nonpolar, uh, whereas for C you've got carbon chlorine up there, Hydrogen, 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 uh, and this bond is going to be, um, have two, is going to be polar, delta plus, delta minus, so therefore the molecule is polar. So five is C. Okay, so question six, which particles are attracted in metallic bonding? Metallic bonding, uh, you need to know this one is, of course, B, cations and delocalized electrons. Question seven, which halogen most readily forms minus one ions? So this is the most reactive halogen. Uh, you know that reactivity for group seven decreases down the group. So the one at the top of the group is fluorine. So the answer to seven is C. Question eight, which statement is not correct for group two metals? An unpaired electron is present in an S orbital. Well, group two all have the electronic configuration of S2. Um, so that is false because these electrons are of course paired. I've got two electrons in that orbital, that s orbital. So um, 8a statement is uh, not correct. So HBr aqueous forms two ions in solution. Which observation is correct for the reactions of hydrogen bromide? It effervesces with the difference of sodium carbonate solution. Uh, yep, yeah, that's going to be correct because HBr is going to be acidic. I think it's going to be like HCl, hydrochloric acid. So, and an acid does react with um, sodium carbonate solution to give me carbon dioxide gas. 
So the answer is 9A for that one. You can go for the other ones. Um, this one, a white precipitate would be formed if it was a chloride ion, so that's not right. Orange with additional silver nitrate, that's just trying to confuse you. Uh, you always get a uh, precipitate. It turns brown on addition of potassium chloride. Again, these two are trying to confuse you with halogen displacement reactions. Don't let them do that. So, three qualitative tests are carried out on a solution of an unknown compound. Uh, you heat it with an alkali and you get a uh, pungent smelling gas, which turns red litmus paper blue. Uh, it gives you, with silver nitrate, a white precipitate, so you should be thinking chloride. Addition of sodium carbonate, no visual reaction, so it can't be acidic. Um, so, why precipitate means it's got to be a chloride, so it's one of these. Can't be HCl because it's um, not acidic, and therefore it is going to be B. It's ammonium chloride, because ammonium compounds, if you heat them with sodium hydroxide, they produce ammonia gas, which would be this pungent smelling gas, which is, of course, um, going to uh, turn litmus paper blue because it's an alkaline.